Hey, I've missed you. I hope the feeling's mutual. And since it had been a while, I decided to do a full Q&A episode today, taking the top questions that you in the audience had submitted for the show this week. But just before I got to the Q&A portion of this episode, I opened up sharing a few of my health and business predictions for this upcoming year. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. So I hope you enjoy the show. Hop over to either the comments or the podcast episode show notes on wholefit.com forward slash podcast. Let me know what you think. Welcome to Whole Fit Talks. This is a show just for you. Somebody interested in taking ownership of your health, leading your life and living your legacy. And I'm so pumped you're here because I am another you. Thank you for being here. And thank you for sharing this out with your friends and with your teams. Let's dive into this week's episode. Well, 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 we're back. Who is on live right now? It is Wednesday, January 23rd, two o'clock Eastern. Hello, Instagram. I see you. I know I don't always see your comments. They fly quick over there, but over on Facebook, a little easier to see the comments. Say hi if you're in live. We have not been on together for a while. Um, So I'm really pumped to be back with you guys and um, I have some fun insight I want to open up the show with today and then we're doing a full Q&A episode. So we'll go an hour today. No more, no less. Let's go right around the hour mark. Instagram always kindly reminds me when I am at the hour mark because it just goes, (laughs) so it's a good way for me to know. If you are brand new new here, uh, Whole Fit Talks is evolving okay so um what it has been up until now is a weekly show that i stream live here on facebook which is kind of how the show began was this weekly platform here live but what grew to be the most popular way you engage with the show over time is through the podcast and you know as i was looking at um where you're engaging and where you're showing up and how, the, how the, the show's taking shape and form going forward, I knew that this is the year I wanted to pour more into podcasting. So I wanna share with you um, in the updates today what that's gonna look like going forward for this show. But if you're brand new, I'm Ange Peters. I'm the founder and CEO of Whole Fit. I'm a holistic health and business strategist and a mom of two. And this show, um, we talk about a lot of things, right? Um, but I would say that they all hover around the, t- the goal of this show, which is um, giving value to those that are interested in owning their health and leading their life, because leadership always starts here first, and living their legacy now. We don't spend a lot of time talking about what we're gonna do, what we're gonna get up to, what we're gonna create. We talk about how to get into action and just make things happen now, taking daily action. So I'm really glad you're here. Please hit the share button if you think that your friends or your team or your community would find value in these kinds of conversations. And if you have a question for a future show or a topic suggestion, we're gonna pop it into the comments there. It's simply wholefit.com forward slash pod question. So I wanna kick off by sharing the review of the episode. So this was uh, one of the reviews shared over on iTunes in the last few weeks. It's by Soul Soothing is the name over on iTunes. So if you are Miss Soul Soothing, please email teamwholefit at gmail.com. We're going to hook you up with a 50% off promo code for any Whole Fit coaching program. Soul Soothing said, I absolutely love these podcasts. Ange has a true passion for holistic health and all things natural. That would be true. There is always something to take away from each podcast, whether you are a business owner, fitness junkie, or just interested in your overall health. Thank you. So appreciate that. And just if you didn't know, um, when you leave a review over on iTunes, it helps more people find the show. So it can be easier to find it, especially if you're sharing it with your teens. Um, So you can hop over to iTunes if you feel led and, and leave a review for the show. And we might choose you on the next podcast. Okay, so... Like I said, I wanna share the new way for the show. So um, as you may know, if you've been here for a while, then you probably know that I have one of those brains that need organization. I need to ensure that what um, I'm doing is making sense, that it's all part of a bigger picture. And so as I was thinking about the show, 
Um, I mean, today being an open Q&A episode, you're going to see various topics talked about. And, and I love that. Um, I love the candidness we can have about very different topics within the show. However, I see an opportunity for this show to evolve, to be more cohesive. And let me know if you agree with this, but um, sometimes I find, like I have several podcasts I subscribe to because I love the, um, the mind of the host. I love the kinds of questions they ask if they have guests on. I love their perspective. I love how they're leading their life. And so there's, you know, there's a select group of podcasts I personally subscribe to. Um, however, the one thing I always kind of wish happened was that there it was an opportunity to go deeper into topics without it being a three hour episode. I just can't do those long episodes. Some of my favorite people do three hour podcasts and it's just, you know, it's an audio book at that point. Right? So what I felt for this show needed to evolve this year is moving in the direction of more micro episodes. Um, so two to three micro podcast episodes each month and then the macro here together where every month the last wednesday of the month we'll meet live here to discuss even deeper the topic of that month so this is the direction i'm feeling the show needs to go in where we take a topic and it's broken down into manageable pieces because i know you know a lot of you listen to this show on the go as you as you've told me and it's it's helpful to have things in 20 minute chunks right maybe it's you know when you're driving to work or cooking in the kitchen or doing a workout um that that sweet spot of something not being too in depth and not being too long is is helpful right so that's the direction we're going in so for your calendars our facebook lives going forward and our insta lives for this platform, for this show, are going to happen on the last Wednesday of every month, likely at 2 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to try to stick to that time unless I'm traveling, and I'll give you a heads up on the Monday of that week. Um, February, for example, the topic I want to move into is the topic of being in relationship with yourself. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that today as I answer some of the questions that were submitted, um, but just really how you build that trust in yourself and in your vision and and the little ways that that comes together over time to create more boldness in your life and, and to ultimately understand, you know, February is a month where we often talk about lovey-dovey things and being in relationship with others, but it starts with us, you know, our, all of our relationships change when we love ourselves in the right way, when we are honoring ourselves, honoring our gifts, honoring our dreams, and slowly building that trust with ourselves. we give at a higher level. So that's where I want to go in February. March, I'm going to do a series on money. That's been very requested. Um, in April, I'm going to do, I believe, the topic of food and, and how we kind of navigate that in my home. Uh, and maybe that will inspire you around some new ideas. So anyway, like I shared earlier, if you have topics you'd like to see talked about this year, um, send them in, send them into the show. We'll post that again. It's wholefit.com forward slash pod question. Um, a couple quick updates. Okay. So number one, the beautiful life lab launched in December. It's been incredible. Um, there's about 2000 students in that lab and it's open. You can, you can join at any time, even though there's a, a heightened sense of priority around it with the start of the new year, we have students joining every week, um, so they navigate with clarity their life, their goals, um, doing lifestyle cleansing prior, and then just really having this beautiful Facebook group community. I mean, they're awesome. Great conversations happening there. And a lot of um, just great sharing happening around how to upgrade your life, how to make things go simpler. And of course, you get a lot of great, um, all of my best tips really in the program that you're gonna receive with that. But you can join at any time. We'll pop the link up there. If you just go to Whole Fit, you'll see it as the neon green. You can't miss it, the, the header bar. Also, um, the biannual cleanse that I run for my essential oil community is happening again starting Feb 25th. So if you're in our community or you have been thinking about starting with doTERRA and you'd like to begin through cleansing, um, uh, we'll post the link there to the Essential 30 Cleanse. Um, and if you're not on the Whole Fit team, I have also given you a link there for how to do this cleanse, okay? Whether you're on another team or you know, you're just curious about it, I give you a nice schedule there for how to do it. Um, one other thing, I mentioned this on Instagram uh, last week, but I'm, I'm starting something new, pretty fun. Um, next month, 
for those of you that have been interested in starting with doTERRA but just haven't started for whatever reason maybe you doubt the quality maybe you feel the price is too expensive um maybe you feel like there's no difference between doTERRA and what you're buying at the mall um so i'm going to give you an opportunity to experience the oils with a fun new concept we're going to put into the uh comments here um a link you can add your email to if you want to find out more this is only for those of you that aren't already using doTERRA okay and not already working with somebody um so we'll, we'll put that link into the the comments here and we'll have it in the show notes of this episode the last thing um i feel like you know we were away in florida for about three weeks and um it was kind of my time to just hunker down and be with the kids and with chris and i actually got up to some great things within the business and working on some projects. And one of the things they updated, which is now, um, it's the biggest hit on my website this month so far, is the Whole Fit Personal Development Library. I'm really excited about this, you guys, because as you know by now, I'm a huge advocate for daily personal development time. I, you know, I, I talk about this a lot, but your, your mindset really does equal your paycheck. And, and how you're investing into your mind is what you're creating for tomorrow, right? It's, it's, it's completely changing the trajectory of your impact and of your leadership when you take time each day to just take that mind up a notch, right? And we do that through development. So whether that's podcasts like you joining here or audiobook, personally, what, what I do nowadays um, is about three hours a day of podcasts or, or an audiobook. My goal um, is to always read one book a week. And by read, I mean, listen, I don't read. I can read. I just would prefer to listen. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to post up the link, wholefit.com forward slash library. You're going to find all of my favorite books by category. So whether you're looking to develop in your leadership or your health or um, in money or in being a uh, better provider of customer experience, all of the books I have read over the years and absolutely love are there. Okay. Um, and I've also given you the podcast that I personally subscribe to and love. Okay. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope it helps you. And if you haven't carved out time already to, to develop your mindset each day, I want you to think about what that could look like for you. Is that getting up 30 minutes earlier in the morning, just to listen to a couple chapters of an audiobook? Um, is it replacing Netflix with, you know, one, one of the hours of Netflix with listening to a book, something that's going to actually create the kind of life and the, the kind of future that you're interested in. Okay. So, um, what I wanted to kick off with before we do kind of a roundup Q and a, the timing of this show being that we're three weeks into a new year. Okay. I wanted to just chat a little bit about how things are going, what's coming up for you. Um, what clarity do you have? And actually I want, I want to invite you if you're on live in all the places, I want you to share with us one thing that you are up to in this first quarter of 2019. What's the one thing that um, if you were to move the needle in this area, you're gonna be super proud of yourself and pumped about And not if, but when, right? You're totally moving the needle in this area, even though right now, maybe it feels like it's, it's a far out goal, but uh, what's that one thing? When I, go into a new year. I love the ceremony of it. I always take time to look back on the previous year and really sit with myself as the CEO of my business. And, and I ask, you know, what went really well and what didn't go well? Um, I ask a lot of questions of the commitments that I made of my calendar. I, I like to keep key things in my Google calendar so that I can reflect back and, and really ask questions of those things and, and celebrate the things that were Awesome. I mean, as I look back on 2018, we had personally in our, in our family, we had some really great moments. Um, some of these things were things I had put on my vision board for 2018, such as buying our dream home in Florida. I have to tell you something creepy. Um, I had put this picture on my vision board of this backyard with a pool and twinkle lights. And in the background was a stucco wall. We ended up buying a home in Florida that looked exactly like the picture I'd put on my vision board. I kid you not, it's, it's actually kind of creepy how when you are so dialed in, you, it really does feel like you're creating your future, okay? Um, so, you know, another moment we had this year, we celebrated my grandmother's 100th birthday together, all of our family together. Um, that was super special. Our girls started at our dream school. 
this past year. It's a Waldorf school here in London. They're absolutely thriving and loving it. It's something I had been knowing we needed to do. Um, I launched several very successful things within the brand. So back in the spring, I launched uh, a real simple, fun, green cleaning school. I engaged uh, with a lot of you. Um, the Beautiful Life Lab was a new program I launched back in December. Very successful. I'm super proud of it because um, it's something that I was being guided to create for you for a long time. And um, I'm really proud of the content and the community that's growing around it. So that was super fun. I also launched a new website um, to make everything a lot easier to find and navigate. The podcast showed up in the top 10 on iTunes several weeks last year in the health category. Um, that was mind blowing. When I looked at my essential oil component of, of the brand, our whole fit team connected over $30 million worth of essential oils just last year in 2018. I mean, through that, we have a powerful leadership team forming. Um, we, you know, as of this last year, over 40 leaders in the whole fit team have crossed the six to seven figure earnings, not revenue earnings. That's what they earn the six to seven figures a year. Um, it's a powerful business model. If you want to learn more about the leaders on our team, we'll put a link up. I'm so proud of them. It's, it's a very exciting thing to see what's happening. That's, um, changing the world literally. So wholefit.com forward slash leaders, you can get to know um, quite a few of them on our team. Um, so I also wanted to open up before I do that, I just want to read some of your comments. You know, what is one thing you're focused on? Gwen said, releasing perfectionism amazing she's moving she's doing a program within doTERRA called diamond club um if you guys are doing that program and you're in doTERRA you know comment so you can find each other there's facebook groups set up for cheering each other on ashley said removing things from her life that don't bring her joy have you seen that new um the magic art of tidying up netflix series i, I what's the name of the show somebody put in the comments um i haven't watched it yet but i have it on my save list so that, that, because that's, that's something I learned through reading that book. If it doesn't bring you joy, it's got to go, right? It already served its purpose. Heather said she's moving the needle with a self-care checklist and doing the Beautiful Life Lab. She's also been committed to helping in Mexico and taking emergency hygiene kits over these last two months. That is so beautiful. Um, Amy said getting more consistent with her daily income producing activities. Lots of really good ones here, you guys. Oh my gosh. If you're, um, you know, wanting to get a little glimpse into what's possible take a look through these comments instagram same thing oh you guys are amazing i love that you're approaching this with clarity okay do i have permission to be to be kind of fun and candid with you right now as i think about this next year um i don't know i mean you guys know me by now i i i, I kind of see where things are going futuristic is not one of my top five strengths which actually kind of surprises me because I'm very dialed in. I feel like I live in the future. Um, a lot of ideas that come to me, I'm like, oh, well, that's gonna be crazy, but it's gonna be awesome. You know, um, I've had some downloads of where I see things going this year. I wanna, I wanna give you a few of them as I think about health and business, okay? This is, of course, this is just my opinion, but let's just see how many of these come true, okay? In health, Here's what I think is going to be pretty hot this year. You're gonna see a lot of people talking about it, a lot of content coming out around it. This will be the focus. This is what I think is gonna be the focus. Sleeping, high quality sleeping, not necessarily sleeping more, but high quality sleep. I think more than ever, people are gonna be really tuned into how sleep affects performance and what they can do to create that, whether it's through um, you know, blue light glasses on their devices or turning off their Wi-Fi an hour before bed, having no lights in the room, essential oils diffusing, people are gonna be really into this. Second thing is meditation. Um, this has already picked up speed for sure, but I think more people are going to have this as an appointment in their calendar that they're taking time each day to meditate because through that space, they perform at a higher level, okay? Just tuning out the world, carving out time for that, whether it's through an app or going to a meditation class, um, that's gonna be really hot this year. Um, gut health will continue to be a big focus, and I think more people than ever are going to be doing a lot of their own personal testing through, um, like I use a service called Viome, V-I-O-M-E, 
You can see it in the in the Whole Fit shop. I talk about it there. Um, just where you actually get to know a lot of your own numbers, where you are able to make decisions that are unique for your, for you because you are unique, of uh, based on your body's gut flora. Okay, and and this is going to help you steer in the right direction with diet, um, with supplements. You know, I, this is going to continue. I mean, this this is only just beginning. Um, the whole healthcare system is changing because people are they're just not interested anymore in going to a doctor or a health coach for that reason, uh, you know, to have them tell them what to do with their body. More people than ever are wanting to take that into their own hands. Um, and then the, the other area I think we're going to see a lot more come out about is the invisible, the impact of the invisible on disease. So uh, real simply, I think people are going to start to be more curious about the role of emotional health on diseases like cancer. I have a personal opinion uh, with women specifically and cancer. I believe a lot of the cancers that women um, are healing through right now are a result of trapped emotion in the body. Primarily the frequency of shame, not using their voice. This is why so many women right now are drawn to um, doTERRA are drawn to um, being, you know, being in leadership because they have a lot to give. And this is the first time they've had the opportunity to really build something with their gifts. Okay. So I think we're going to see a lot of talk on that. Now I have some pretty, you know, bold predictions about business that are going to come true. I'm very clear on this. Ready for this? Number one, we're going to see a lot less talk a lot less of the keyboard warriors they're going away and a lot more of just being the example of what you're talking about okay the tickets to fantasy land are gone okay so there's there's no more um talking about all the things you're doing without actually being the example of that only living it is going to be the way going forward people are are tired of people who are talking a good game posting pretty pictures having all the right branding in place, but there's like a lack of depth there. There's a lack of trust and that's dying. It, it's just got to end, right? And it's going to end this year. Um, if you follow, there's a real powerful woman. Her name's Caroline, Caroline Mace, and she is a medical intuitive. You can look her up, read her blog. Um, she, I'm going to talk about something later on in this show called the various floors of the building. Okay. And um, basically what I want to reference here is that there will no longer be uh, an energy of trying to convince people, okay? People have moved from one floor to the next floor in the building of their consciousness. So what you're going to see happen in the next year is a genuine interest in what you're doing, not because you're talking about it, because you're not talking about it anymore. You're just living it because you've moved to another floor in your consciousness. You're living it. So you're not trying to convince people why they should use essential oils, for example. It just is the, it is who you are. It's in your being and people see that upgrade in your life, okay? Second thing, if you aren't solving a need in your unique way, you're going to go back to work for the people that are. That's a big one, okay? The time of the dabbler entrepreneur is done. It is. Um, this is the year for the all-inners, those that are all in, in what they're doing. I love something that Seth Godin recently shared on his blog. It was titled, Nobody Dabbles at Dentistry. We'll pop the link up in the comments there. He says, if you're doing one of these non-dentist jobs, the best approach is to be extraordinarily good at it, so much better than an amateur that there's really no room for discussion. You don't have to justify yourself. Your work justifies you, okay? And he's, he's saying, you know, nobody, a dentist doesn't dabble in dentistry. And I want you to think about in your business, in what you are telling the world you do, in your elevator pitch of what you do, are you, approaching that work in an extraordinary way are you all in is it a believable feeling people have when when they experience you because if they don't you're going to go back to work this year for people who are clear on that so we're going to see a lot more people leave um, business owning to go back to the nine to five in the cubicle 
because they just couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. And why it wasn't working is because they were doing a lot of talk, not a lot of living their talk, okay? That's gonna really shift this year. Um, two more things. If you're spreading gossip and darkness, um, there is no amount of kale or essential oils or recycling that's going to save you. Through, through what you are putting out into the world, you're going to create a lot more of that in your own life. I mean, this has always been the way, but because the light is getting brighter, love is moving in. There, you're that All you're going to have is a feast of what you're giving, okay? That's, all, that's always been the way, but for the last couple of years, it's been easy for people to spread fear and darkness, and that's changing. Okay, love and light is increasing at a rapid rate. And the last thing I wanted to share, and hopefully you can celebrate this, this is going to be true this year. You are going to be more excited about the people that unfollow you than you are about the followers. Why, why would that be exciting? What would that suggest? Whether you send out emails, you're going to celebrate all of the people that unsubscribe to your newsletter. If you're on Instagram, you're gonna start tracking metrics of unfollowers to celebrate it, not to be bothered by why they left. Why would that be? Why is this the year that the metric that will be most important is the number of unfollowers you have? It, it, I want to see if any of you understand where I'm going with this. Elise said truth. Okay. Can you, can you uh, go deeper? Kimberly Ann said weeding it out. Yes. What does it mean when somebody is unfollowing you? <laughs> Betsy, Betsy, you get me? Comment. Jess has said getting rid of the rubbish. Okay, so perhaps when someone's unfollowing you, you've stopped being lukewarm. You have gone all in. This goes back to that. You know what? This needs to be like a whole podcast. I need to stop talking about some of my predictions because they're going to come true. Um, if you are still obsessing over vanity metrics, like how many follows, followers you have and subscribers, if that's what you're looking at more than anything, you're missing the point. Um, you, you need to get excited about people that unfollow you because that means that you have communicated yourself super clear and that you're all in and you are one newsletter at a time or one Instagram post at a time. You are getting tighter and closer in on the person you are most here to help. And it's not the person who unsubscribes. So celebrate them, wish them well. They will find their person. Woo. Okay. I had to share those, but I might do a more, um, a more in-depth on that topic, okay? Maybe in the next week while it's still kind of top of mind. Um, all right, let's go into some questions. <laughs> I see all your comments. I'll come back and check them out later. So these were questions that were submitted to the queue over the last month. So like I said, they're gonna float on a variety of different topics. And then there were a couple that were shared over on um, Facebook this week that I might get to. A lot of you are commenting on the unfollower prediction. Um, I want you to really sit with this because maybe that's the freedom um, you needed to feel was that it's not about more people liking you. Yes, more people will find you, um, but only when you start to have more unfollowers because that means you're getting clear with your message. Ooh, do you guys feel that? Do you understand how powerful that'll be for you? Okay, question one. Let's get some water. <clears throat> From Noelle, <clears throat> she says, any suggestions on prospecting businesses, doctor's offices, spas or schools um, with doTERRA, how to start the conversation or get a meeting and what to research and bring? I've been wanting to step out of my comfort zone for a while and just do this, but I've never seen this example and appreciate any guidance, thanks so much. Okay, so what I wanna to touch on, so Noelle is in a direct selling business. She wants to um, help local businesses, doctor's offices, spas, and schools integrate her product, okay? So number one, she did say um, she's been wanting to step out of her comfort zone and just do this. 
um, you'll know when you're ready to do this because you first, you don't want to go right to that, you know, segment, right? You want to make sure that you have um, developed the art of helping people in a one-on-one -on -one situation because you don't want to set yourself up to fail and moving into a situation where you're now integrating a whole clinic or doctor's office, you're going to need to make sure your systems are pinned up. So really ask yourself, okay, let's say this chiropractor office says yes, what is your plan to take care of them? Um, make sure you have that really zipped up before you start making those contacts. And if you're at that point, Noel, then I would say become a client or a customer of that business first. Because again, direct selling is a relationship business that only ever builds from there. Um, so, you know, if you're just kind of cold calling places, you're probably um, warming them up to an idea that someone else is going to close them on. Because if you don't have more of a, a relationship with them, then it's not going to go further than that. So, um, you know, let's say it's um, an, a massage place. A really smart move would be to start booking regular massages there. So they start to know you. And, and in this example, you bring your oils. And I do this all the time, you guys. Where um, And not intentionally. It's not like my... I don't always approach it like, oh, I want to help this spa integrate doTERRA, so I'm going to book there. But usually what happens is I, I have massages as a regular part of my self-care weekly. So sometimes I'll just choose different places, knowing it will eventually lead to that conversation, right? Um, so that's my, my best advice. Make sure you have your systems ready to go. How are you going to support that business if they you know, decide to join you in this? What's your plan? Because you have to be professional. An amateur would do this without a plan. They would show up and think it's as simple as just giving them some samples. The pro understands that this is a relationship business. They're in it for the long game and they, um, they know this is a two-way street, okay? So they develop that relationship through becoming a customer first. Question two comes from Maya. She said, hi, firstly, I absolutely adore everything you put into the universe. Thank you, Maya. As for topics, I would love to hear some content about mothering, such as self-care and rituals for mothers of little ones and oils to support this, et cetera. Um, yeah, you know, motherhood is, it's such an interesting topic because um, I believe that as mothers, we're guided by our intuition and our children really lead us to become the mother that we're here to be, right? How many of you who are, who are mothers understand as I'm saying that, that your kids are always guiding you into the direction of where you need to grow as a mother. And we don't have this all figured out in the beginning, right? There's a lot of people I listened to, a lot of books that I read in the beginning that made me feel crappy about how I was mothering or how my babies weren't sleeping or why they had eczema or, you know, there's so many of those things and there's so many firsts as a mother. And so I think to work backwards, I would say, Number one, um, you need to make time and create the space for yourself to fill up, okay? Um, because I think a lot of the decisions as mothers that we would look back on and say, oh, I could have done that a little differently. I think often that happens when we're in a state of um, being empty, really, and it's a tiring job. Um, Maya said hers are little. I mean, it's tiring. It's like honestly about survival at that point. So I think it's like it's learning little ways to nurture yourself so that you can bring more to that role and be in a healthy space as you're doing your best and learning. Um, so little things like maybe it's getting up a little bit earlier than what you know they might wake up at just so you can have a tea and, and read, you know, read or write in your journal or um, maybe it's asking for help once a week so you can just go to a cafe and just, you know, read a book on a topic you love or whatever it is. Like, you know what your things are that help you just come to life more. So um, I would make time for that. But the second thing I already mentioned, your intuition will not steer you wrong. I believe that as women, we have this CPU in us, this central processing unit that is always guiding us in the direction we need to go. Women are powerful. Being a mother, um, you know, is an, is an opportunity for you to really understand the power of your intuition. And there are no right ways. There are no um, <laughs> recipes for, for mothering in, in your best way. It really is uh, just doing your best every day, asking for help where you can. Um, certainly being in community with other mothers helps. That's, that's when I first um, was introduced to blogging, actually, was because I was a new mom. 
And I found that blogging community and powerful to just, you know, be able to be in community with people who are in the same place that I was. So there are a couple books though. I absolutely loved, 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 loved on, on the topic of parenting that I do want to share with you. So first I would check out Dr. Shivali's work. She has been on a lot of podcasts. Um, her book, she may have several books, I'm not sure, but the one that I've read and just truly resonated with is called The Conscious Parent. You can find it on Audible as well. I also love The Danish Way of Parenting, um, which kind of taps into the, the Hugue uh, approach in your home and just taking a lot of that pressure off to be this perfect mom and just really letting your kids guide you. Um, and then another one as your kids get a little older that I've loved is the five love languages for kids. So um, really being able to converse and love your kids in a way that they appreciate in a way that's meaningful for them and, and you know, kind of comes back to you as well in that sense. So um, I will write a note to update my newly updated <laughs> personal development library with some books on parenting, which will have these titles in there. Um, Charlotte asked, your skin is amazing. I have used the doTERRA anti-aging skincare line for about a year now. I honestly love the anti-aging moisturizer, but the cleanser and toner, etc. cetera, uh, don't see benefits with. Can you tell me why you prefer the Raj? Okay, so um, I've done a lot of posts in the past on my skincare approach. And because I live in Canada where we have seasonal weather, I love, love, love the Virage system like 90% of the year. And until we get to days like today, if I flip this camera around, you'd all be depressed <laughs> like that. Um, it's pretty rainy, cold. We've had like what feels like minus 30 degree weather. So that's when I pull out um, more moisturizing products like the Essential Skin Care line. But I would say the top things for healthy glowing skin, it's an inside out situation most of the time. Um, number one is your water intake. You, you absolutely must be drinking at least half your body weight in ounces every single day. So if you weigh 140 pounds, you need to be um, intaking at least 70 ounces of clean filtered water every single day. That's like a minimum just to have everything functioning. If you drink more than that, you're going to start to see it through your skin. Second thing is supplementation. Um, for skin specifically, the top doTERRA supplements that I have taken every day for the last five years are Lifelong Vitality, which is the multivitamin uh, system, um, PB Assist, which is the probiotic. I take one before bed. Uh, Terrazyme, I take three to four a day. So with every meal and then often first thing in the morning. Um, I think that's it for supplements for skin, yes. Um, and then skincare itself, exfoliating really helps. I love, um, I love doing like a simple, whether it's like a sugar scrub on my face once a week. Um, and then, like I said, typically the barrage line. Um, I actually have a video. I don't have it in the show note links right now, but um, Jill, uh, let's remember to post the video. Or you can go over to YouTube and just search Whole Fit Glowing Skin. There was a whole class I recorded with doTERRA um, teaching you all like all the ways to do this. So you might want to check that out. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> Janelle said, um, what were the patterns that you saw in yourself as you grew into the person and leader you are in doTERRA? Okay, this is a really good question. So I mentioned earlier in the show that I wanted to reference Caroline Mace's work. Um, there's two things I want to share. I've noticed as I've grown into my own leadership, um, not just in doTERRA, really in business, in life. Um, but the first thing I want to mention is a, a, a resource doTERRA has that really explains what's going on. Okay. I actually have a big printed version of it framed here. You guys may have seen this before. Um, this is something that I picked up a couple of years ago. So they, I don't think they sell it in this large poster form, but if you search doTERRA belief um, mountain or something like that, it'll pop up on, on Google. If you search doTERRA belief chart or belief by rank, what I love in doTERRA is there's, if you're not in doTERRA, um, there are ranks within your business that you achieve. Um, once you've really stepped into the fullness of your leadership at that level, and it's not like somebody objectively, says, okay, I believe you're now this. <laughs> it's recognized through your results and you don't 
You don't skip steps to get results. You can't. Sometimes people force it though. Sometimes you'll see people at um, recognized leadership ranks and you just have a feeling they haven't quite gotten there completely. Okay, that happens like anything in life. You can just force your way into things. But if left to the integrity of the growth, um, you will see at the various ranks, there is a, a different belief level that needs to be tapped into. So when someone's first starting in doTERRA, for example, they're on the first floor, they're, they're loving their oils, they're starting to see all of the changes that are happening in their home, they start to share it with other people, they're excited that other people are interested, they end up hitting that first rank of elite, okay? Then um, they start to share more about their work with people and people start to take note. They start to feel, oh, this is cool what you're doing. I want to be a part of it. And so that leader ends up hitting premier because a couple of people have partnered with them in the business. I'm going to give you a real quick overview of this. Okay. And then they start to believe in themselves more in their vision as a leader. They start to realize that they, as a leader, they have gifts and they have a unique way of reaching people and they hit silver rank. And then they start to believe in their people and their team. They start to really pour into what's possible with their leaders. They, they, they lead their own life in such a way that it inspires other people to want to do that too. And they hit gold. Um, and then platinum after that is a lot of the same goals. And then diamond rank typically happens when somebody has a, a very strong belief in why they're here, in the work that they're doing, um and why it matters their belief in their why is so big that they're not taken down anymore by thoughts of what people will think of them okay i mean that's a simple indication of somebody who's who's operating on level one um then they will get to blue diamonds because they start to believe in their influence they they recognize that with leadership comes responsibility they they don't live carelessly and recklessly. They take their work seriously. They take themselves seriously. And, um, you know, they they attract a large team at that point. And then presidential diamond, the the top of the mountain within doTERRA happens when somebody is living their legacy now. And this is why I talk about legacy right within the description of this show is I used to think that legacy was something that you would leave when you die. Um, and maybe back in the day, that's the way it was. But I think that today, what we're being asked to do is live our legacy so clearly right now that if you, if you died tomorrow, not just your closest circle of friends, but literally every life you impact could say what you stood for. That's legacy. The, the the way that you shaped our world, the way you show up every day, the vision that you have, you're creating a better world. So you don't get to these highest levels, truly. Um, I should say you don't arrive there in a sustainable way unless you have, you have grown through these beliefs. Now, um, I mentioned Caroline Mace. So she talks about, the, you know, there are various floors within the building of your consciousness. So when you first start something, you are so, you're, you're focused on yourself. You have a lot of fear. You're worried about what people think of you. You're thinking a lot of yourself. You may start a business because you need to get out of debt. It's very self-focused. You're operating on the first or second floor. To go to the third or fourth floor, it requires you to start thinking of others. You stop being addicted to your own fear, and instead, you're obsessed with how you can help other people live a better life. It's very outward. There's a book called The Outward Mindset that I would highly recommend if you're struggling um, to move from a focus on yourself to others, okay? Now, to summarize what Caroline Mace talks about a lot is there is a penthouse within our consciousness. I'm not there yet. I don't know if any of you are there yet, um, but it, it basically is you, you see the world through a very different set of eyes than somebody who is at first, second, third, fourth floor. Okay. And you don't skip steps to get there. You have to go through a lot of experiences, a lot of growth to get there. When I think of somebody who 
is in the penthouse. They're seeing the world, they're living from that place. Their whole life is like a prayer. Like, like you, I mean, there, there have certainly been people in our world who have operated there. Everything they do is love, right? Um, everything they do is service to others. And you, you do eventually arrive there if you're committed to the growth. So anyway, look, look up Caroline Mace if you wanna learn more about, she has a lot of teachings where she references moving through the various floors of the building. But that's what I've noticed in doTERRA is, and this is why your personal development is so important. And this is also why failing, failing quote unquote is so important, um, is getting out there and just showing up, being, being very committed to showing up and helping people find you in your work um, is what's going to continue to take you through those levels and, and operating from a place of service and how you can leave the world today a little better than it was yesterday. That's what continues to further your growth. Okay, Rochelle said, I have several customers who are not on Facebook. Do you have another method of delivering information to your team? If you have customers who are not uh, there, how do you connect with them? So there's lots of ways. In fact, I think Facebook is becoming so busy. Like if I'm added to another Facebook group, I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> um, Facebook is not the ideal way to communicate. However, what you do have on Facebook is vibrant connections and community and conversations happening that you cannot duplicate through the other things I'm gonna suggest here. So it's a bit of a trade-off. I mean, um, Facebook is wonderful for creating groups for people to be part of you know, a private group where you have all of your, organize, your info organized and um, you're able to connect them to resources quick enough and they're able to ask questions and other people can weigh in. You lose that if you move to just a tutorial on your website. Um, you lose that through email marketing, right? So, I mean, obviously doing um, newsletters to your team is a great way to make sure they actually receive the information, um, but you lose the conversation around it. So I, I don't think there's a perfect way. I mean, I think we're gonna see a lot of platforms emerge in the next couple of years. Um, there, there's a lot of platforms that are looking at Facebook right now and picking apart what they're not doing well and they'll create the answer. Um, but like anything, once something hits the mainstream, it's not as great as it was when it first started because everybody's on it. So, I mean, email marketing would be my number one thing. I would say create campaigns, you know, automated emails for your community to help educate them. Um, Instagram is great as well. Using Instagram, Instagram is my favorite place to play. And I think more people, when I look at engagement on, on my own uh, platform, Instagram's where it's at. I mean, I can post um, a story and have 6,000 people see it in 24 hours um, because of the engagement within that. And I have, and that's, so just to give you reference, I have uh, 30,000 followers on Instagram, 6,000 of them will watch uh, a story within 24 hours. You don't get that same um, ratio of engagement on a lot of the other, certainly not on Facebook. Um, so you know, I think there's a lot of great ways you can do it. You just have to pick a platform, whether it's email marketing or Instagram or YouTube and, and be consistent with it and really create something that people will find value in. Um, Teachable is another one you might want to look into for just setting up modules. Um, so those are just some ideas for you. But honestly, if somebody says they're not on Facebook, I usually just say, hey, if you want the value and education of our private groups, just set up a fake profile and let me know what, what the name is that you set up and I'll add you. So there are ways to get around that. Okay, last question that was submitted was from Alexandra. Uh, she said two questions. So how to create that chamber or deep workspace? And just so you guys know, the chamber um, is like the deep focus office space that I talk about in the Beautiful Life Lab. So Alexandra must be in that program. Um, she says, how do you create this when you work from home in a small studio space with your partner? Um, tips for creating that container in such an intimate space. So this, this serves a lot of you. One of the things I say in the Beautiful Life Lab is don't plan on doing your best work at the kitchen table. So you all have different situations at home. What I would suggest is if you don't have a space that has an extra bedroom or um, an office, then maybe it's a closet, maybe it's the pantry. Maybe it, it has to be somewhere where you can go and not have a ton of distractions. Now, if, if you actually can't figure out how to do that at home, it would be really helpful for you to invest in an out of home office space. This can be really smart. If you are, um, if you have just started owning your own business, maybe you have a full-time job, maybe you have kids, 
It would probably greatly benefit your work if you were to leave the house for three hours once a week. You can even, there's like co-ops where you can go and just rent time at an office. So I would say start there if you don't have the space to create deep focused time. And if, if you're hearing this, you're not sure what I'm talking about. Um, a lot of people say they're working from home, but really they're not doing much work. Much, they're, they're not focused, they're scattered. They're trying to send emails while they're folding laundry. They're not really giving their work their best and it's suffering because of it. And a lot of people think they're doing a lot of work when actually they're not. If you look at the output, if you look at the growth and the results, things aren't moving. Even though they'll tell you they work their business, you know, five hours a day. It's such low quality output that it's not moving the needle. And just a simple thing like having a very private space in your house or going to an office space off site can make the biggest difference because you go into that space. So like I have my office here. When I close that door, um, it is go time. I don't mess around in here. I'm not thinking of all the things I need to do around the house. And if I didn't have this space, I would definitely be renting space because I, when I say I'm going to get to work, I need to get to work. Okay. So I, I hope that helps you. Um, Okay, so, and then the last two questions for today, real quick, we're taken from Facebook. So Caitlin said, what are some doTERRA products to use when trying to conceive and throughout pregnancy? What is a reliable source to look up? So Caitlin, I have organized this all for you. I'm gonna share this link with you guys. Um, for our oil community, what I started doing years ago was creating toolkits on various topics that I knew they'd wanna learn about. So I have one just for mamas, for, um, uh, pregnant, whether you're moving through pregnancy, birth, oils while you're delivering, um, and then beyond as your kids grow. So we'll put the link up there for you and we'll put it in the show notes. Um, and then last question was Sarah. She said, what is something that you attempted that was a failure, um, but ultimately you learned a valuable lesson from it? How did you unpack this? She said she's learning to fail forward in all areas um, of life, but it's a skill. I think this is an interesting topic, she says. So I have a hard time recalling in the early days. I, I know that I made a lot of mistakes. Obviously, when you're new at anything, you're making mistakes. Um, you know, and there were ones that there were time like I could look back and I could, you know, there's a lot, there's hundreds that I could share with you of like, like the time that I drove four hours to teach an essential oil class and um, one person showed up and that one person that showed up um, I think she had been drinking. <laughs> Actually, I know she had been drinking. The, the, the person that asked me to come teach this class said that this friend might be an alcoholic. Um, but that's okay. And, and, my, you know, and, and I learned a lot from that. I learned how to um, create excitement around being part of a class. I learned how to qualify people for my time. I mean, I had lots of examples of situations like that where I just didn't do my diligence to prepare properly. I, I thought, oh, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> nope. Uh, so anyway, you know, a lot of those kinds of things, I, I think a lot of my mistakes, honestly, in the early days is I've always, I've had a fire about the work that we do. And um, I made a lot of mistakes reacting, you know, reacting to people, um, saying things or judging things that I was sharing or creating and I would bite back. And, you know, often people on my team, I was with a group last week, they're like, oh, and I just love it when somebody um, tries to like spread fear in the group um, about something that like our essential oil community, for example, we have about 25,000 people in there now. So obviously I have lost the, we're at like 60 degrees of separation now, right? And, um, you know, it'll often we'll have people come to the group and they're just kind of spouting fear, right? Um, and that used to upset me and I used to react to it and I made a lot of mistakes in, in how I would handle that. And this group last week said to me, oh, I just love it when somebody asks something because you seem to come in with just such a loving, kind and truthful response. And it's like, it's a mic drop. And I said, yeah, but you know what? I had to go through a lot of pain to get to this place. <laughs> so um, all about to say, I don't think there's ever really failures. Um, my brain doesn't even think in terms of failures anymore. I, I personally just follow every lead that my soul gives me. Even if it freaks me out, I, I go with it. Um, for example, I'll share one real quick with you before you wrap up. 
I just recently finished reading Chip Wilson's book, Little Black Stretchy Pants, okay? It's about the story of Lululemon, how the brand came together, um, and what really formed the culture. And my soul tapped me as I'm reading this book, and, and I was an ambassador, I still am considered an ambassador with Lululemon, but I was with them um, more hands-on for three years, three or four years. I loved my experience there. I love, I love like every single person I met within that company because of the strong vision of um, Chip Wilson. And so much of what he shared in this book, I was just like, yes, we need more visionaries, right? So anyway, I got the download that um, Lululemon will be integrating doTERRA in the next couple of years, and I'm meant to play a role in that. And, um, you know, not only will they be diffusing doTERRA in their stores, but they will be integrating it into their leadership trainings because the cultures are such a fit. Um, those that are attracted or those that at least used to be attracted to Lululemon to work there um, are very interested in the global impact and in conscious purchasing and in um, just being their best self. They're not interested in having their health be distracted through harmful chemicals. Like there's such an integrative fit um, between the two. And, um, and I am the muse that doTERRA built their entire company or that Lululemon built their entire company around. Um, you know, so my work as being an ambassador and a lot of my connections within them, I know that I'm meant to um, form part of a bridge between those two companies. And I mean, the, the only thing that maybe wouldn't work out is if, because Chip Wilson isn't the visionary um, leader of Lululemon anymore, their culture may have changed enough in the last couple of years that it's not um, what I perceive it to be, right? From my time there. So that could happen. Um, but, you know, I just, I look at, like, I, and when I got that kind of like soul tap, I'm like, oh, I know what that's going to require. Like, I know it's going to require a lot of um, connections and meetings and, um, you know, working with doTERRA to make this happen. And, and just, you know, th there's always things that I, that I like, I had this happen a couple of weeks ago where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm the one that needs to do this. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. And it all starts coming to me. I'm like, okay, this is how it's gonna happen. And immediately I'm like, oh, but what if, right? Like, what if all these things go wrong? Or that's human nature to think that way. But because I don't look at things anymore as failures, I, I always look at, okay, every single dot connects, every, everything, everything, you guys, everything you, you go and fail at tomorrow is going to make total sense next year. Um, it just, it all works out as long as you keep showing up. So there are no failures. There are no failures. I actually, um, I get, I get the intention of what, um, people mean when they say fail forward, but it's not, it's never a fail. You literally can't fail. The only thing that could go really wrong for you is if you allow way too many people to weigh in on what you're doing because you're asking or you're, um, you're allowing other people's um, perspective on what you're doing in too much. You're not tuning in enough. Okay. That will steer you wrong. You'll make a lot of mistakes. So I would say uh, learning to trust yourself. Yeah, there are no failures. It, it always works out. Okay. So homework for today. I want to give you a couple questions before we wrap up. I always give you a little homework to help put what we talk about into action. Okay. So there's three questions I want you to write down and just sit with today or tomorrow. So because we opened up talking about clarity and um, just what you're getting up to in this first quarter of 2019, my first question for you, what do you need to do to have more clarity in your life? Because maybe, you know, you saw people talking about what they're doing in this, this first quarter and, and it frustrated you because you're not clear on what you should be doing. What do you need to do to have more clarity? Maybe it's doing some lifestyle cleansing. Maybe it's moving your office to an offsite, right? What do you need to do to have more clarity? Number two, once you have it, what is the number one thing you know you need to focus on in this first quarter? Don't make it so crazy that you know you won't do it. But if someone wants to ask you, what are you up to in your business in this first quarter? What's, where are you moving the needle? Could you answer them with clarity, right? I want you to have that clarity because how you're navigating this week, the third week of a new year is really casting on your upcoming year. Cause a lot of people are quitting on goals that were not probably established or they've just kind of 
you know, arrived here. They have no idea what they're working on because they haven't taken time to just get quiet with it, right? And then the third thing, very important, and this kind of loops in the failure question, what are all the things that could go wrong as you focus on moving the needle in this area? And what will you do when those things happen? This is a really helpful practice to have, especially if you are a business owner, is, is having your plan B and your plan C. You know, so you're doing this thing. What, if something goes wrong, what's your plan? If that goes wrong, what's your plan? You know, you're always like, you, you're not planning for um, a disaster to happen, but if it does, you're ready for it. Because then that starts to really diffuse any fear that you might have around it. So I'm gonna stay on with the live group on Facebook just to read through a few of their comments. Instagram, I'm gonna lose you um, in about 30 seconds. But just so you guys know, I will upload this as a podcast tomorrow. It'll be episode 44. All the show notes will be over on wholefit.com forward slash wholefit talks library forward slash E044. And I will be back live on this platform February 27th at 2 p.m. Eastern. We'll discuss more deeply our topic for February, which is being in relationship with yourself and growing that trust. And I'll be releasing a couple of um, podcasts in February on this topic. Okay, so watch for those. Instagram, mwah, I'll see you end of Feb. And Facebook, I'm going to stay on just to scroll through some of the comments here because we have a little bit longer here. Um, but let me just see if there's anything that stands out. <clears throat> Katie says, I've been following the lab and I've been loving all the organization of my time. I now have specific doTERRA business time set aside. And when it's time, I'm just not sure what to do exactly. How do you decide what specifically to do when you're working? Katie, I love this question. When you don't know what to do, you always only do the thing that's going to bring income into your business. You do not go down the trap of like doing the fun stuff until you've done at least one thing that's bringing income into your business. And that's always going to, in doTERRA, what creates growth and breathes life into a business is building relationships. It's preparing to teach. It's enrolling people that have showed interest um, in, in joining. It's supporting your team. It's an acronym in doTERRA called PIPES. And if you just Google doTERRA PIPES, it'll come up. It'll give you lots of examples of what that can look like. Just even look at the launch guide that doTERRA has. It takes you through what to do. I hear your question a lot, though. I'm surprised um, how often it comes up, you know, where, where somebody, they carve out that time. They're just not sure what to focus on first. Um, in the lab, as you know, I have you considering batching each day with a focus. So if you haven't done that yet, I want you to think about your week and how you can create a theme for every day and you only do work within that theme, okay? And then, and, and you know, you'll, you'll get better at this over time where you get very clear on what the two to three things are that you need to do each day. Uh, yeah, Lauren said um, a publisher friend of hers locks himself in his office in the house um, so you get stuff done. The act of locking and unlocking with a key creates a mental shift for him. I love that. That's so true. Like there are those little triggers. I have a friend of mine who does 10 pull-ups every time he walks in his office, um, which triggers his mind into action, into doing the hard thing, right? Um, so that can be really helpful. <clears throat> All right, well, listen, so fun to have you guys on live. Uh, like I said, I'll get this uploaded tomorrow. And stay tuned in February for our topic on being in relationship with yourself. I'd love to see some questions come in on this so you can steer me in the direction you're needing to go as you think about, you know, what, um, what comes up for you as you think about trusting yourself as a leader, um, asking for more help. I mean, all of that branches out from a place of relationship with yourself first, right? So excited to be with you guys. Um, oh, Casey, this is a cool last question. Says, I feel like I'm thinking above my rank. The things I want to do might be too far ahead. How do I step back? So that can actually, you know, to be in the future as a visionary um, is a good thing, but it doesn't replace the action you need to take today. So I would say that's a very good practice to have to keep dreaming bigger and bigger um, and to, to really think about where you're going I love that you said you're doing that, um, as long as it's not replacing the action you need to take today to get you there. So um, that's a great thing. And, and I would say that that's what really separates um, visionaries from 
you know, people who are feeling stuck. It, it's, it's, it's that ability to go there into the future and to create um, something today that is being influenced by that future. And then you have, you know, of course, people want to join you in that because it's exciting and vibrant. So love your question. All right, guys, I'll see you um, next month for our topic. Thanks for joining live. Hey, thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you liked the content, please consider popping over to iTunes and leaving a review so that more people can find this show. If you have a question or a topic suggestion for future shows, head over to wholefit.com forward slash pod question. You can also find all past episodes and show notes at wholefit.com forward slash podcast. See you next time.